<laughs> hey guys, I'm live. Very exciting. Uh, today I'm going to be talking with Alyssa Carson. And boom, if you haven't looked her up, first of all, Google her, Google her immediately. This is part of the Collision Conference. Uh, you just talked earlier with some folks from uh, National Geographic, which was super exciting. So this is part of Collision Conference. So we just decided to do an interview over here. So welcome. It's good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yay, exciting. So how did you get involved with Collision, first off, just to talk about them? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, well, especially with all this COVID stuff and everything switching to online, I'm trying to remember if Collision was one of the ones like where I was supposed to actually speak in person, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but we've just been trying to do like, you know, some conferences and stuff, especially since it's online. So it's a, lot, a whole lot easier to actually participate in the conferences. So um, they got in contact and it worked out. Excited. Yeah, because the, I went to Collision two years ago and it was great, but I am totally digging this. I think I'm a little bit of a closet introvert. So this time has been kind of fun to get my my energy back. How about you? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty crazy. Um, online school was like a little tough with like the amount of classes I have and trying to just like handle that amount, that many classes like online. Um, but now that kind of like that's over, I mean, I have like a couple summer courses, but they're a lot easier and there's way less of them. So it's not too bad, but I mean, Good. this will probably be the most relaxed summer I've ever had in my life. So, <laughs> cause you've been at this. So, uh, you're 18 and I, you just finished your first year of college. Is that right? Correct. And that was in, I just was watching on that, as, um, astrobiology. Is yes. that what you're studying? Yeah. <laughs> I love how the one guy was saying, okay, you're going to try and help with all of the, uh, you know, you can maybe figure out some bugs. You can bring things back from Mars, which is what your goal is, your destination, to see how that helps here on, on our planet. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, astrobiology is kind of what I'm studying. But, you know, the cool thing about astrobiology is that with that, you can really study anything from bacteria to entire solar systems. So you kind of just have such a huge range of stuff that you can study. So that's a big thing that I love about it. So I love that you could you could uh, fall back on being a virus hunter. Is that right? I mean, technically, <laughs> yes. Um, probably won't end up doing that. Probably no. fall back, fall back on like studying planets or something. <laughs> We're looking at like thirty-five years at least. You have a lot of things to do in between now and then. So, if you don't mind, just tell everybody. My friend Gigi is here, by the way. She's in Philly. She was very excited to come on here and uh, find out more about you. I was watching. You've done three TEDx talks. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, and I'll post the links for there too, so you all can see her journey as well. But if you don't mind, just let us, you know, tell us about your journey and getting to, from the age of three dreaming about space to now being part of the, the NASA program. Yeah. So, I mean, basically ever since I was super young, I kind of had an interest for space and kind of Mars specifically. Um, and so uh, kind of my dad remembers me coming and asking all these questions about space and about Mars. He told me a little bit about the missions to the moon, but um, kind of my sights were always set to Mars because no one had been there before. Um, so just as a little girl, I was interested in it. But obviously, the more I've learned now, um, I'm much more motivated to go to Mars just because I've learned of so many of the different benefits of going to space. Um, but really, I just started out by going to space camp to learn as much as I could about space and about the different careers that I could do. Um, and then more recently, more, I guess, realistic preparation um, has been with a private citizen science research organization called Project Possum. So it's basically a whole bunch of everyday people contributing to science and doing research. But we're able to do really cool things that will eventually help uh, on my resume in the future, like microgravity flights, water survival training, spacesuit suit evaluations, G-force training, decompression, all sorts of fun things. Um, so that's been really, really cool. All the things. <laughs> There's so many different factors that, that go into that. Charlie is here too, by the way. So keep shooting for the stars. Absolutely. Gigi said she's Googling. She wants to know all the things, <laughs> which is perfect. Um, so tell me about, I know that you have the Blueberry Foundation. Can you talk about that too? Yeah, you know, well, Space Camp was kind of super important for me growing up just because it was a place for me just to really like express all of my love for space. And um, the big, the biggest thing it really helped with was helping me figure out what kind of 
career I would want to go into. You know, from there I learned that I didn't necessarily want to be a pilot. I didn't necessarily want to work in mission control. I could kind of figure out what kind of route I want to take, which kind of led me into wanting to be more of a mission specialist, research scientist, or um, now in astrobiology. But um, kind of the Blueberry Foundation, its initial start was to start getting more kids to be able to go to space camp and have that opportunity if they have a strong interest in space, just because I know it helped me so much when I was younger. Um, so that was kind of the start of the foundation. And um, more recently, we've been doing um, kind of more like assistant work, um, especially like in different countries. So, for example, we've worked um, with a group out of Mexico several times and working with them logistically and helping them kind of get kids over to space camp. We also worked with a group in Argentina and getting 50 kids over to space camp. So um, we're getting, you know, people all over the world having the experience of going to space camp. That is so exciting too, because I think there, it feels so prohibitive. It, it feels prohibitive in general because we, you know, I think you were talking about on your, you're saying in your talk earlier that we had the moon generation. So what was that? 1969. And then we really just haven't had that much going on. Of course, we just had uh, some astronauts take off. What, like a month, was that a month ago? I felt so badly for them too. They were ready to go. And then it was, you know, <laughs> then they got, they had to wait a couple of days. The anticipation, anticipation must've been amazing. But um, our generation had, my generation had that moon, but yours really hasn't that. So now you're, you're terming it the Mars generation. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, of course, so much amazing work has continued to be done in space with being up on the International Space Station and conducting research all the time. But it definitely is about time for us to do something big and something exciting. You know, I do believe that so much of what we do in the space industry comes from public interest. You know, that's why we stopped going to the moon, because the public was just like, yeah, OK, we've done this. So kind of the space, the space industry had to move on from that. And so um, I definitely think now talking about a mission to Mars, we're starting to gain that momentum and gain that interest again. So um, that's super exciting to see happen. Plus, you have to admit the term, the hashtag Mars generation is pretty badass. It does sound pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it totally does. We're just excited. And again, it's giving your generation more of a connection to that because you're right. It is based on public interest, which, by the way, I want you all to know the shirt that I pulled out of the laundry for you because I was so excited to talk to you about NASA. But yes, for your generation, that's going to be something to look forward to. And then also adding in the female factor. Obviously, you're in something that is just has so much patriarchy and male domination. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, you know, definitely the space industry is pretty male dominated. I mean, more frequently, um, you know, we're starting to get more female astronauts kind of being selected and that kind of thing. Um, but I think more importantly, the thing that we all need to look at is that it takes tens of thousands of people to send that one astronaut into space. And so the goal is to get more women in those tens of thousands of jobs all across the board, all across the space industry. You know, there are still situations if you go to a um, NASA facility, there may be one woman working in that department. And I think that's really what needs to change. And that's mm -hmm. like the, the main focus, not necessarily just getting more female astronauts. So like the people on the television kind of get seen as having more women, but kind of all across the board is where that kind of comes from. So um, it's been a whole lot of fun kind of being able to speak with other girls and inspire other girls to uh, possibly pursue a space career. No doubt. How fun to have people reach out to you and then they see a face that's familiar. I think that's one of the most prohibitive things too, is just not seeing someone who looks like you and it's daunting to have that. So I absolutely love it. So we've got a couple people in here. My friend Louisa is here. I love this. Gen Z is truly our sister generation is Gen Xers. Mars generation is fantastic. Absolutely. So tell me, I know you also speak, is it five languages? Four. Four. <laughs> I'll go with that. That is three more than me. So I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, growing up, which I have no idea why it's in Louisiana, to be honest, but um, right. I went to a kind of um, international immersion school, um, K through 12. So basically starting in kindergarten, you learn the different subjects in different languages, which the main ones are French and Spanish. So I'm pretty like fluent for the most part in French and Spanish. Um, Mandarin, it's kind of been on and off, to be honest, okay. like going, growing up. Uh, sometimes I've been really strong in it. Other times I haven't. Since graduating high school and not speaking Mandarin as often, that one has kind of like flailed out the most. But um, for the most part, it was super cool just because we had teachers from all over the world. They were native to the language that they were teaching in. So we were learning the culture, the language, the accent, everything about it. Um, and so doing that for however many 12, 13 years, it's uh, 
most of it's pretty stuck in there. <laughs> so what, what is cool, because I've been stalking you a little bit on Twitter, is that you're using those languages to communicate with people because I've seen a couple of things. Now, Italian, is that also one as well? Um, Kind of. I mean, yeah. some like some like similar like romance languages I can pick up on, but right. since I don't like use them as frequently as like the main ones I've studied, those kind of come in and out a whole lot. But if I'm in the environment, I can usually pick up other languages fairly quickly. And it's about, again, 10 times uh, more than, than most of us. But what I, I love about that is that you are bridging that connection with people because especially right now, the U.S. is seen as really kind of pushing people away. And for you to be able to bridge that gap with language, with presentations, with talking to people, I think that's encouraging to women all over the world. Yeah, totally. I mean, especially, you know, if I'm traveling to, let's say, a country in South America and speaking to a group of kids, you know, I think it's a total game changer to be able to actually speak Spanish to them because they can see I'm their age, I'm speaking their language, this is something they can do as well. And so that's had a really big impact. And, you know, we've seen that several times, you know, we, um, I forgot, I think it was when I went to uh, Chile, um, you know, we were down there and my dad actually asked the people like, do you think Alyssa would be having the same impact if she was just speaking English all the time? And they were like, yeah, I think so. And my dad was like, no, you need to think about this. Do you think she would be having the same impact? And they were like, no, probably not. Just because everyone <laughs> is just, you know, so like shocked and, and see that as such a benefit. They do. It's unusual. But again, I think it's encouraging to people as well. So it's not that difficult to do, especially at a young age, to have that be something that's going to really advance your career as well. You can talk to, to different uh, groups of folks, too. We've got a couple other people. Andy is here. Love seeing female uh, astronauts. Woohoo. And you glow. Hashtag space career. Uh, you, obviously, all of us folks that have been around and seen the, <laughs> at least for the, for the moon, we're so excited to see the next generation. Mark is here as well. Karen, they're nice to see you, Louisa. Uh, I love this, Gigi. Mandarin has been off and on. Wow, it's been totally off for me. <laughs> Great role model as well. So uh, six months to get to Mars, is that correct? And that is correct. one way. Is that correct? One way is, is six months or is yeah, that yeah. trip? So Just to go from Earth to Mars is six months. So do you feel like this time right now, as far as isolation, I'm sure you get asked this so often, but I've seen a couple astronauts talk about that. Of They were prepared for isolation with actually going into space. Can you talk on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, totally. You know, especially with quarantine and all, everyone's been joking as to like, we're all basically prepping for a mission to Mars, you know, because it's the same, <laughs> it's that same situation, being in the same place, being with the same people. Um, but totally with the mission to Mars, having six months just to get there and then staying there and then having to come back and all, it's going to be a pretty lengthy mission. Um, I mean, we've had astronauts, you know, spend a year in space and that kind of thing. So we're starting to have some experience with this long term missions, but, you know, the mission to Mars will be even longer. Um, but it's a whole lot of just kind of just being like a team player, being able to, you know, hang out with those same people and get along with them and those kinds of things. And, um, you know, basically just being able to wrap your mind around it. You know, they say so frequently, um, when you're looking at becoming an astronaut, training mentally is just as important as training physically. I agree. I think the uh, that is the piece that people don't realize, but this is more than ever unprecedented, this many people around the world who are learning about it. So they're going to be able to, <laughs> I think, uh, really relate to it as well. Do you think you'll be able to document that uh, when you're on the journey? I'm loving that we are seeing all, these, all this information coming directly from people at the space station. So do you think you'll be able to do that too if you go on this trip or when you go on this trip? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think for the mission to Mars, I mean, uh, so much is documented. Astronauts are pretty on a strict schedule and everything, so most stuff is pretty documented. Um, but I think as well, you know, just kind of like our own personal feelings and stuff will probably be um, documented to an extent because um, I'm sure they're going to be trying to make sure we aren't going crazy sometimes. So I'm sure they'll do little check-ins. Um, but for the most part, especially like on the way there, we'll have like some stuff to do, but it's going to be pretty cool because kind of throughout the journey, we'll be, you know, taking pictures. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, performing experiments and stuff, testing the radiation levels that far away since it will be the furthest people have ever gone. So um, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff happening, uh, even though we're just kind of on the way there. There's still a lot going on. But that is definitely the journey as part of the destination for that trip. Mm -hmm. How long will you be there? Um, so it kind of depends. So um, uh, basically, they're looking about around a year is kind of what they're estimating. Um, but basically, the reason why it kind of changes is because um, 
the Earth and Mars don't really orbit in like perfect circles. They orbit in ellipticals. So what that means is sometimes Mars is really close to the Earth and sometimes it's really, really far. Um, so basically we're going to launch when Mars is as close as it can possibly get. So that way that six months isn't any longer than that. Um, however, to, for, to come back home, we have to kind of wait for those planets to kind of realign. Um, so you kind of got to think pretty big picture here. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. <laughs> and I hate to nerd out and say, wow, but you don't even think about that type of thing. And I mentioned uh, when we were in the green room, I'm like, well, I know that Mercury is in retrograde. So that's about all I have on <laughs> that too. That's about the science use I get for Mercury. But being there for a year, that makes sense. And you were talking about in the other interview too, that what's going to be cool is you can take a lot of the things that you're learning there and bring that back to the earth to see how that can help us with our environment too, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, with the amount of benefits that there are with a mission to Mars, I mean, as far as like bringing stuff back, the cool things about going to Mars is that, first of all, we're going to be figuring out more about it to see if it's even possible to have like another planet, which obviously would be a huge help kind of in the long run, you know, but it's something that we can start preparing now. You know, let's say population continues to grow. It would be awesome to have a second place to kind of continue. And with technology increasing, you know, that travel time of six months will be drastically changed to something shorter. Um, but at the same time, I'm finding out uh, if there's any resources on Mars that can be useful, anything that we can use there to actually bring back that would help any problems here. Um, not to mention, you know, all the technology that we make um, to do something as crazy as go to Mars. You know, that's the great thing about the space industry is that um, by having these crazy ideas of going to another planet, we're constantly pushing ourselves and pushing ourselves, especially in technology. And all that stuff that is either invented by the space program or for the space program is then marketed and used, you know, as everyday objects. There's so much stuff that we use that you probably don't even know was originally uh, created for the space industry. Okay, that is a great comment. Is there a place that we can go that has a resource that has, has all the cool stuff that was made for the space industry? Because that would be really fun to kind of to put that into your everyday world. Thank you. Yeah, no, it would it would be really great. Um, you know, I talk about it all the time. The space industry is really bad at marketing um, about all the stuff that they've done. You know, um, me and my dad used to joke all the time that there's like a NASA sticker on everything that you know was made for the space industry. You know, people would be just kind of just stunned but I mean some popular things I mean so kind of like the uh, the like absorption part and like um in disposable diapers so obviously kind of like before when there's just kind of like cloths and reusable diapers so actually like the polymer and all that was actually created by the space industry um velcro wasn't created you know directly by the space industry but it was used kind of in the idea for it um, as well as, you know, just a lot of our basic technology, you know, when we were going to the moon, we had these, you know, gigantic, you know, rooms full of computers and stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, by wanting to push ourselves and want to, wanting to do new things like reusable spacecrafts and things like that, we've been able to kind of shrink that stuff down. I think NASA needs a PR agent <laughs> to talk about how, <laughs> or, a better how cool, <laughs> or a better one. Exactly. You talk about how much cooler they are. That's great information. My friend drew bringing in, damn you, Isaac Newton, you ruined everything. Didn't you? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, tell us how we can help you and how people can help support you and, uh, and your goals. Yeah, you know, um, so I mean, if you want to follow kind of directly what I'm doing, um, all of my stuff is under NASA Blueberry. So that's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, whatever social media you prefer to use. Um, but kind of along with that, you know, as long as I feel like you continue to have somewhat of an interest in the space program or just support the space program in general, um, you're helping so many people kind of continue to um, supply so many jobs that are working on a crazy mission like going to Mars that we're going to need that uh, public support to actually eventually push us to um, going back to the moon and on to Mars. I think that's a fun way, yes, for us to support. So going on Twitter, sharing your journey, you've got a bunch of fun stuff. I've been following and then I, I found out about Mike Mongo uh, because you had retweeted him and then I was retweeting him last night. So see how fun that is that we can get a couple of degrees separated from one another. And yes, Gigi, cough, cough, PR. She just did a live stream about PR right before I jumped on here. So I knew she'd think that was interesting. So uh, we definitely want to connect with you. I saw that you also have your LinkedIn connection on your uh, NASA Blueberry website. So I'm going to connect with you over there too. But thank you so much for popping in and talking to us today. Yeah, totally. This is great. Thank you. Bye, everyone.